What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overlord here. We're going to be talking about several different horror topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about The Conjuring 4. We'll be talking about Scream 7. We'll be talking about I Know What You Did Last Summer 3. And we'll talk about the upcoming renewal of From. So starting here with The Conjuring 4, Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson both posted these really sweet captions, photos as they wrapped filming of The Conjuring 4, aka The Conjuring Last Rites. Vera posted this saying, round about 5,000 days ago, this guy and I signed a WB contract and I said I do to embodying Ed and Lorraine Warren. Today he raps, I have another 12 hours of laughter and insanity with him and then abruptly he will walk off set, peel off sweat soaked demonologist garb, shave off his sideburns, flash that dazzling smile and bid our fake marriage adieu. Yeah, I got, got them feels today. It was much a match made in heaven, a hell of an era, Here's to 12 years, I cherish you. Now, Patrick went on to post this as he rapped with filming. They posted this a week or so ago at this point. Patrick said, as the sun sets on the Conjuring franchise, I am overwhelmed. There aren't enough thanks to go around for the thousands of people who contributed to making the, the making of these films and the millions who've watched them. Vera Farmiga, what to say? Our fake marriage has lasted longer than many real ones. <laughs> That's true. He says, I adore you. You have really... Or he goes on to mention Michael Chave saying, you have beautifully taken the reins and I can't wait to see this one put together. Thank you to all the co-stars supporting roles over the years, especially our newest additions, Mia and Ben. Thank you, Peter, and all the producers and Warner Brothers Pictures for supporting us. And then there's James Wan. We've had a good run and we ain't done yet. Love you, man. Ed Warren out. Now, these posts did get me emotional. I don't know if it got many of you emotional. I did see some people sharing it on Twitter, but it just hits you in the feels when two stars who are at the center of it all are highlighting that this is indeed supposed to be the end of an era. I have hope and faith that their legacy is going to continue on The Conjuring TV show, but I remember when I first saw The Conjuring in theaters when it dropped in 2013, that was a very special moment to me because it just ended up being one of the greatest horror movies that ever that I ever got to experience inside of a theater with a large audience, everybody reacting to it. And then it went on to have some pretty decent sequels, the third one being the weakest. The second one I thought was pretty good and lived up to what the first one brought to the table. So hopefully with the fourth movie, they can go out with a bang and it's better than the third movie. But I just know the fourth movie, seeing that in theaters, is probably going to hit me, get me in my emotions just because of the fact that the third one wasn't that good. And also because of the fact that the first movie still holds such a special place in my heart. So I cannot wait to see this wrap up. But The Conjuring 4 has wrapped and they put out those sweet moments or sweet captions and I want to share them in this video. So let's talk about Scream 7. Scream 7 reportedly casted Cassian Bilton as Taylor's boyfriend. Taylor we know is Sydney's teen daughter who's being rebellious. She's going to be played by Isabel May. Isabel May got confirmed late in the day after her initial report, but Cassian didn't, if you noticed that. Many people did and found that to be interesting, while others just irrationally continue to get excited about anything because it was positive so the reason for that is because he apparently from what i have heard multiple times at this point passed on the project or he could still be in talks he was in fact in talks i do know that much why he didn't sign is anyone's guess and it's always possible that he does end up signing for now i've heard from multiple sources cassian isn't confirmed and it makes sense considering we didn't get a confirmation report from the trades like we did with isabel may now, if you've been following me on Twitter, this isn't news to you, but a male star from It Ends With Us did audition for the role of Brian. Whether he got the role or not, I do not know that. Time will tell. Filming is expected to begin next month in January, despite Neff Campbell previously stating that filming would start in September, then another point in December. Now, December, like I stated, could be the start month. We could get a big swerve this month with a lot of casting news, and then they start filming right after Christmas or so. I'm gonna hold hold on to January just because I don't see them starting this month with the holidays right around the corner. They're gonna start right after New Year's most likely. Patrick Dempsey is reportedly close to signing according to Daniel RPK. So there's a lot of news that will be announced sooner rather than later with Scream 7, but I want to circle back to Cassian Bilton because he did not sign. He is not locked to play Taylor's boyfriend just yet. He allegedly passed on the project altogether, and I've had it told to me by several reputable insiders who often have their own track record of being correct in the past as well. So let's talk about I Know What You Did Last Summer 3. Freddie Prince Jr. 
shared some information about I Know What You Did Last Summer 3. One was on his Wrestling With Freddy podcast and another was on That Was Jolly podcast where he made comments that really brought a smile to my face about Ray's return not feeling forced and how that was very important to him. It's organic as opposed to other offers he's gotten in the past that he turned down because it wasn't organic and it felt forced. That put a smile on my face because he's echoing some of the comments that Jennifer Love Hewitt just made. She wants something to do. She wants something to not just feel cheap and be like, oh, we're doing an I Know What You Did Last Summer movie. We have to go get these characters. We have to bring them back. No, you don't. You need to come up with something of substance. Give them a, an arc, something substantial to do. Then you seek them out. Don't just bring them back just to get people into the theater to see a little glimpse of them and it has nothing to do with them because all eyes right now point to them not having any major focus in the story. So during his Wrestling with Freddy podcast, he revealed this about Ray. He said Ray still works on a boat and is a fisherman. Now, I don't know why I didn't see that coming, to be honest. It makes sense. Ray probably works with one of the friends that gets caught up in the Ben Willis 2.0 situation. Now, let's talk about From Season 4. From Season 4 is going to be happening. It's going to shoot, I guess, in 2025. It's going to premiere in 2026. That is a long wait. Uh, if you have not been watching From, you need to start watching that show. It is one of the best horror mystery shows on TV right now. Now, I will say I do think it's underrated because of the network that it's on. It comes on MGM+. Plus. So, I would hope that they can branch out and expand it onto a bigger platform somehow. Like, I, I know for a fact if it somehow were to be in syndication on Netflix, that would bring a lot more attention to it. But it's going to stay on MGM Plus 9 times out of 10. But I, I think some sort of capacity, if they were to get a deal to have Netflix airing the first couple of seasons, that would be a big way to get more eyes on this show. Because this show is highly underrated, in my opinion. Uh, if you're into murder, if you're into mysteries, stuff like Lost... Stuff like Pretty Little Liars, but except this time you're actually getting some decent quality answers. And when I say like Pretty Little Liars, I mean they're literally edging you. But when you get to the climax, you actually are satisfied with what happened. You can trace it back to season one, episode one. You can trace it back to season two and all of the episodes in the second season. They have made it clear that they have a vision. After what just transpired in season three, I cannot wait for season four. They got a vision the writers know what they're doing they're not just writing as they go this has been being planted and fed to us in bits and pieces ever since the very first season so again if you have not been checking out this show called from do yourself a favor check it out sooner rather than later shout out to drum dums for this last one we are going to talk about halloween really quick apparently according to a video he just recently did Scout Taylor Compton and Danielle Harris on their podcast circled back on this unfortunate encounter they had with Jamie Lee Curtis at the Halloween Inns premiere in which it wasn't something they were satisfied with because they were really excited about meeting her and they looked up to her. Apparently, Jamie Lee Curtis reached out to both of them and she actually sent books to Danielle's children and I guess she just made up for that poor experience they had because she was tipped off about it and them talking about it and she wanted to reach out to them to let them know it had nothing to do with them personally she's just not a big fan of horror movies and she made amends with that so i thought that was a sweet thing of her to do my only thing is this i still don't fully agree that she owed them anything to begin with and i thought it was pretty much known that jamie lee curtis isn't a horror fan just like nev campbell isn't a horror fan i i also don't know why that's really a big deal or a big shock to some people this is a job at the end of the day for for stars their passion is acting <laughs> just because they happen to be doing a lot of horror movies doesn't mean they necessarily are passionate about watching them if that makes sense i don't know it just it, it, it made sense to me it's not really that shocking that these stars that are in horror movies are known as scream queens aren't necessarily the biggest horror fans it wasn't a shock to me, but whatever. It was nice of her to reach out to them. But let me know what you guys think about all of this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.